Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and John. Today we have a special guest, his name is Bill, and we are actually filming at Bill's house in beautiful Morgan Hill, California, which is about 30 minutes south of where I live in San Jose. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna show you how to rebuild the front brake calipers. We're gonna walk you through all the steps and show you all the tools and the parts you need to be successful with rebuilding your calipers. We've already got the vehicle jacked up, supported on jack stands on the front, and we're gonna get started with this job. Let's go. Before we get going on this job, I wanna talk about one thing. While you're doing it, you could choose to do some other things like pull off the rotors and have them resurfaced at a shop that has a brake lathe, or you could replace them. Another thing you can do if you are choosing to remove the rotors is you could repack your wheel bearings, or you can go even further and replace the wheel bearings and races on your front hubs. We could have included that in this video, but we thought that would make it too long. But we do have a video in existence that covers those two jobs. So if you click on the link above, you can see our wheel bearing and race replacement video, which includes the brake portion of replacing the pads and replacing the rotors and some associated parts that are optional that Bill chose to do. All right, with that said, let's get started with this job. For this job, I'm gonna be the cameraman and Bill is gonna be the one turning the wrenches because uh, he likes turning the wrenches just like Timmy the Tool Man and John. So we're gonna get started. He's gonna use his DeWalt impact gun. And he's gonna take the lug nuts off. Next, we're gonna get the brake calipers off. And what I like to do is turn the wheel all the way right or all the way left, depending on which side I'm working on, to be able to have more room to work. So what Bill is doing right now, he's gonna turn the wheel all the way to the right, and then this is gonna give us more room to work right here. And then when we get to the passenger side, we're gonna turn the wheels all the way to the left to give us more room to break free the caliper bolts that bolt the caliper to the knuckle. For this job, Bill noticed that he has some cracks in his brake line. So we're gonna be replacing this brake line as part of this job. We're gonna disconnect the brake line right here at this banjo bolt first. That banjo bolt is a 14 millimeter and Bill's gonna break it free with a long box and 14 millimeter wrench. Now, of course, you're gonna get brake fluid leaking out, so you're gonna to wanna to have something there to catch it, and you're not gonna to wanna to have it dripping on anything that is painted because it's gonna strip the paint off. What Bill is doing right here is he's clamping off the rubber line with a hose clamp. Hopefully it's tight enough to where it's gonna stop the flow. It's kind of built like a vice grips in a way. Now we're gonna break free the 17 millimeter caliper bolts. You've got one up top here, and then you got one down below. For this bottom one, you have the knuckle arm a little bit in your way. So he's gonna get on there with a short breaker bar and a deep 17 millimeter socket and break those free. Okay, he's got the top one broken loose. Now he's gonna go for the bottom one. Okay, he's got both of them loose. Might have to switch to a ratchet and spin them out a little more. Okay, he's got that one pretty loose and he's gonna get the top one loose too. Maybe just use the extension with the socket and you can hold the caliper and you could probably spin it out with your hand. You could unweight the caliper a little bit. Yep, there we go. Okay, he's got both bolts out and now he could slide the caliper off of the rotor. Now when you hear your wear indicators on your brakes, it's meaning you're gonna do this soon if you don't change your brake pads. <laughs> yeah, he definitely went metal on metal here. You, you can see the deep grooves. There's the wear indicators. Yeah. All right, we're gonna do the exact same on the other side. We're gonna turn the wheels all the way to the left and we're gonna get that passenger side caliper off. We've got both calipers on a workbench and we're gonna get the brake pads out in the spring. You first have these 
a retaining clip. It's right here. You could use a screwdriver to assist you to push it through like that. And then you could slip it out of each end of the caliper retaining pins. So you got it free. If these are really corroded, it might be hard to push them out, but let's see where we get. Yeah, they are pushing out real easy. You could use something small like a little punch or a screwdriver like I'm doing, push it through and get the pin out. And then you could see now this spring will come out. So it just hooks in here and then it's captured on this side right there. And then we'll push this one through. And then now we have both of our pads out. And we're gonna do the same with the other side. This job is gonna be pretty dirty. You're gonna to wanna to have some plastic brushes, a lot of brake cleaner, a lot of rags. I already got one of the dust boots off with the metal retaining clip. And now I'm gonna show you how to do one. The ring is split so you can expand it. And you could use different tools. You could use a pick tool. What I'm using right here is just a small flat blade screwdriver. And you can get in there and move the metal retaining clip and then work it off just like that. And then these boots come off pretty simply. They just pull off nice and easy. So we're gonna do that with each of the four caliper pistons. All right, we have all of the boots off with their metal retaining clips off of the individual pistons. What we have here is we have the two old pads with the pins holding them in place. And next we're gonna try to get the caliper pistons to push out far enough to where we can easily pull them out by hand. And we're gonna do that with some air pressure with an air compressor and a tip like this as a rubberized tip. So the idea is you apply air pressure through the brake line hole and that air pressure will push the pistons out to where you can grab them with your hands and pull them out. Another technique is you can grab two flat blade screwdrivers and hook them against this lip and slowly work them out that way. But we're gonna try the air compressor out. You only wanna eject the caliper pistons just far enough to where you can easily get them out by hand, but you don't want the piston to push out so far that it loses its connection with the inner seal inside. Because if that happens, if one of the pistons goes all the way out, then when you apply air pressure through the brake line hole, the other pistons will not push out because the air is gonna take the path of least resistance and push out the side where the piston pushed further out than the seal that's inside there. And so that's what our goal is. We're gonna use some rubber blocks. You can use whatever you have. You can use wood, whatever. And we're gonna put some rubber blocks in between here. And we're just gonna try to get the pistons to come out a little bit, but not too much. That seems pretty good right there. Let's see where that gets us. More than likely what we're gonna see is one or two of the pistons are gonna push out first and the other ones are gonna stay put, but let's see how it goes. I'm gonna cover the hole with a rag so no brake fluid goes shooting up in my face and let's see how this works. So I got a little movement out of this one and the other ones didn't move too much. Let's try this again, see if I get a little more movement. It looks like we've got almost equal movement out of them. And so now what we have to do is we have to remove one of the blocks and downsize it a little bit and see if we can get them out further. So I'm just using my pick tool to hook one of the blocks and see if I can work this thing out because there's a lot of pressure on it right now. Currently right now we're just using 45 PSI. So I have a little skinnier block that I'm just gonna stick in here as a spacer and see if I can get it out just a little bit more. I'm gonna put it in the center, see how this works. See, this one popped all the way out, I could tell. So it tilted on me, so I needed a longer block. I'm gonna have to pull this thing out and push the piston back in and reset. We tried the trick with the old pads. It wasn't really working out for us, so now we're trying another way, and this is a learning process. We're gonna try using a few of these adjustable DeWalt clamps and see if we can do it differently. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clamp one piston, I'm gonna clamp the opposing piston and hold those firm. Then I'm gonna clamp a third piston with a third clamp and you gotta be careful not to cover the hole that you're using to apply the air pressure. And then I'm gonna give some gentle air and see if I can get this piston to move a little bit. So we're just working on getting one piston to move. Okay, it moved a little bit out. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset. I'm gonna put this clamp on the piston we just got to move a little bit. And I'm gonna try to get this one to move a little bit. Gotta just be a light touch. Little jet, okay. So I got that one to move. Now I'm gonna take a clamp off of the other side and I'm gonna hold both of these because I've got both of these to move out a little bit. Now I'm gonna try to get this piston to move just a little bit. Okay, I got that one to move out a little bit. I ended up compressing this one in a little bit because it was starting to bounce back and forth from the pressure. I'm gonna reset and try to get this one to move out just a little bit again. Okay, it moved out a little bit. I'm gonna reset this clamp. And then now I'm gonna switch and see if I can get this one to come out just a little bit. Okay, they all seem to be out about equal. The question is, are they out enough to where we can wiggle them out with our hands? We'll soon see. <laughs> Maybe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen the clamps up and see if I can just get a little bit more movement out of each one. I'm gonna do each one individually. Okay, that one came out a little bit. I'll lock that in. I'm gonna loosen this one up a little bit. The clamps are now impeding the piston, so I don't know how much more we can get out of these. I'm gonna to try to move it a little bit up to where it gives a little distance here. Okay, I can see that one popped out all the way. Bill and I got tired of messing around with the air pressure and blocks and clamps. We got them out pretty far and we could work it out with the flat blade screwdriver. This is the surface you don't wanna mess up because this smooth machine surface interfaces with the inner seal and that's what keeps your brake calipers from leaking. This lip right here that I'm gonna hook with my flat blade screwdriver isn't a sealing surface. So I'm not worried at all I'm gonna do any damage to the caliper piston by prying on this lip. So I just get the end of the screwdriver against that lip. I work it out a little bit on one side. I go to the opposing side and work it out a little bit. And I just go back and forth until the piston is nice and loose and I could just plop it out with my hands. I think that's far enough. And see, you could get it out like that. You can use the technique we showed you with the clamps and the air pressure and some blocks, but the final part to get the pistons out, I recommend just using a flat blade screwdriver like I'm doing and work it back and forth and slowly get it out. I think that's loose enough. And there we go. We tried to get fancy with the air pressure and clamps, but honestly, I think a flat blade screwdriver is probably the easiest way. Provided you're only catching this part with the screwdriver and you're not scratching this surface. And so now that we have the pistons out, we're gonna show you how to remove the inner seals. So this is the rubber seal I'm talking about. You can use a metal pick tool to hook it and pull it out, but Bill has these nice little plastic levers that we can get in there and pull one out, and I'll show you right now. So it's just a little plastic tool. It's got these curved edges where you can get underneath there and fish it out. See how I got underneath there? And then there it is. I like the fact that he has these plastic tools. If you're using a metal implement like this, you have to be really careful that you don't score the metal inside the caliper because if you score it deep enough, then this could be a pathway for brake fluid to get past this seal and then you're gonna have a leak. So you're just gonna to wanna to be careful of that. So we're just gonna show you one more, hook it underneath there get it up just like that 
We'll put a link in the video description of these plastic tools. They're made by Titan. We're cleaning up these calipers and we're finding some buildup of junk in here, like heavy deposits. It looks like a little bit of rust. And the question is, how do you clean it up without damaging the walls that the pistons slide into? Maybe it's not such a big deal because the piston is really making a seal with the rubber gasket right here. And that's why some gunk was able to settle in there because it's not a tight fit where the metal on metal is sliding back and forth because you would think it would be cleaning it. So yeah, we're scraping with plastic tools like the spudger tool and the plastic tools that he has that we use to get the rubber gasket out. We were also just experimenting with a very fine Scotch-Brite. It's not very abrasive to see if we can get some of that gunk out. That might be a little risky, but we're really not taking off any material per se. We're just like cleaning up the surface of the contaminants. This is not very aggressive. If you use like emery cloth or something, that would be a different story, but this is a pretty lightweight abrasive. So we're gonna work at this and we'll come back and show you how well we were able to clean it up. So Bill and I tag team the cleanup of the calipers. We find that some of these hard corrosion deposits are just impossible to remove. We did use the lightweight Scotch-Brite a little bit in there to smooth it out. And we paid a lot of attention to this groove where the seal rides, cleaned that out really good. But some of these hard deposits that are back there, we're just gonna leave them because it just takes a lot of effort to clean them up and we don't wanna take off so much material with an abrasive and do some damage. Here's something to note. The caliper pistons weren't leaking before with all those deposits. So we're assuming that even though there's still some deposits left and we cleaned it up pretty good, it's not gonna cause us any issues. So the main thing is we believe that this channel needs to be really clean because that's where the rubber seal goes. The other corrosion and buildup that's in here is not as big of a deal, but I would say you probably should spend some time knocking off some of the high parts of the corrosion as best you can with plastic tools or maybe a light Scotch-Brite pad and get it to where it's fairly smooth when you run your finger in there. So we're now ready to start rebuilding these things and we're gonna start by getting the new rubber seals in place. One final thing that Bill's gonna do is he's gonna use this air compressor with a nozzle that has a pretty fine tip and he's blowing out all the ports. So the main port and then each of the four caliper piston ports has two holes and he's blowing air through those to just knock out any debris that could be in there. We cleaned up the pistons really good. You could see though that there's some deposits on here and it's just like a staining and that's as clean as we're gonna get it. We're not gonna be able to get it any cleaner than this unless we took some type of abrasive to it. It's smooth, but you could obviously see the discoloration. So the main thing is you just want this surface as clean as possible. And if there is any actual deposits on it that you could actually detect by running your hand or your fingernail over it, you'd want to knock those down. But we just simply clean these up with some brick cleaner and a rag. And that's all we did. So here's the parts that come in the brake caliper rebuild kit. You got some grease, you've got the eight seals, and it appears these are partially pre-lubricated with a little bit of grease. You've got eight of these retaining bands that hold the dust boots on and then you have a couple caps that go over your bleed nipples. So that's everything in the kit. We're gonna now start by getting these seals installed. It's personal preference if you're gonna put a little bit of this grease on each one, or you're just gonna go with it the way they come out of the package. There is a little bit of detectable grease on each one of these. So we just have to get one of these seals and install it in each one of the caliper bores. Even though these internal seals come pre-greased with a lubricant, he's deciding to put a little bit of extra grease on each one of them before he installs it inside the caliper. My motto is you can never have too much lube. Yeah, lube is good. 
So it's just simply you get it into the groove and work it around and get it to where it's fully seated all the way. So he's going to start on the bottom side, get that in, and then work it around and snap it in place. Make sure it doesn't roll over on you. Yeah. It's nice and flat. Do a visual on it. Looks good. Okay. He's got those two. He's going to flip it around. He's going to do the other two. Okay, you get the idea. We're gonna finish this one off and then work on the other one too. All the inner seals are inside the caliper. We're also gonna use some of the supplied grease and we're gonna put just a little bit on the outside of the piston. So when we're sliding it in place, it's less likely to roll the seal. So that's the main thing that you're worried about when you're installing the pistons. If you fold over that seal, then you're gonna mess it up and you're gonna get a leak. I would suggest lubricating the outside of each piston to make it less likely that the seal will roll on you. You just have to fit it in there carefully and give it a little pressure. I'm gonna put a little on this lip. Yeah, on that first lip that goes in. See if you can get it slid in. It is definitely uh, snug now. Yeah, it's a tight fit. That's what she said. Just like the whales like it, tight seal. The whales like seals? <laughs> Tight ones. <laughs> Tight ones? <laughs> Gotta kind of finagle it, make sure you don't get it cocked too much in one direction. All right, you get the idea. We're gonna get all the other pistons in. Something to note is these calipers are actually two individual pieces. They're held together with these bolts. You can see a little bit of the seam there. They join right here with the gasket. If you happen to notice that your caliper was leaking at one of these junctures where the two halves meet, you can buy the necessary gasket from Toyota and repair it. We're not gonna replace this gasket as part of this job because Bill wasn't getting any leaking from either caliper from this spot where the two join up. Bill is just putting a little bit of grease on each of these boots. You mainly want to get some grease on the inside of this bore here so it's easier to slide it over the end of the piston. We're going to demonstrate installing one of these rubber dust boots over the end of the caliper piston. So he's hooking it down low, lifting it over the top, and then he's going to push the piston in a little bit and it seems like when the piston is a little bit more retracted, you can get the dust boot in its final seated position much easier. After I seated it in and pushed it in, the piston, I went back on this outer edge, removed it, and just kind of lightly rolled around to seat the inner seal. Seems to want to lay flatter that way inside. Okay, so once you got it on, then you removed it from the the outer right here and made sure that the inner lip is fully seated properly inside that groove, right? Right, yep. Kind of just pulled it off a little bit, relieved some of the tension and then snapped it back on. If you look between the seal and the piston, sometimes there might be a little bit of a, a wave in there. You don't want that. The final thing we have to do is get the retaining metal clip in place. And so you get it started on one side and then you have to just work it around. We're doing it with just with our fingers and that's it. You could maybe get on one end with uh, needle nose pliers and stretch it out, but it's not that tough of a retaining band. So you can most likely do it with your hands like we just demonstrated. I kind of hooked it with my fingernails. That's strong, but it's doable. Yeah, so all of the Retaining clips are in place to keep the dust boots on. Now we're going to get the brake pads and the springs installed on the caliper. Bill chose to get some Akibono pads and those aren't OEM pads, obviously. And you'll see that it has the anti-squeal shims in place onto the pad. If you bought OEM pads, you would have a two anti-squeal shim combo. One of them is going to be slotted and the other one is going to be solid. 
And from my experience, what the factory service manual instructs you to do is you put a layer of the brake caliper grease on both sides of the slotted shim. And then you put that against the back of the pad. And then you follow that up with the solid anti-squeal shim and you put that over the top. With this application, the instructions in the Aki Bono pad kit, they instruct you to put a little bit of caliper grease on the ends of each of the pistons and that's so you're not gonna be getting any squealing from your brakes. So Bill's got some caliper grease here and it's orange. Silicone base. Silicone base. He's got this. I usually use the black stuff, but this is high temperature too, huh? Oh yeah, I think it's rated higher. Okay, Permatex, all right, I'll learn something new. So he's gonna apply a little bit to the face of each of those pistons. And you get the idea. We have all the ends of the pistons greased with the brake caliper grease. Now we're gonna get the pads slid in place and we're gonna secure them with the pins. For the caliper pins, you're gonna to wanna to use your caliper grease and grease them up a little bit because when you apply the brakes, the pads are gonna go in and clamp against the rotor. And then when you let off the brakes, they're gonna relax and go back a little bit. And you don't want the pads to hang up on these pins. You want them to be able to slide very smoothly so you don't get one of your brake pads dragging on the rotor. So he's gonna slide the pads in place. And a set of four pads, you're gonna have two of them that are gonna have the wear indicator. And this little wear indicator is to alert you when it starts squealing, it's gonna alert you that you've almost ran out of brake pad and you can catch it before you go metal on metal and destroy your rotors. Like I did. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes that little thing will just break off and you will never hear it, especially if you're listening to loud music. You're gonna slide the pin in this direction. It's kind of common sense. Right here, there's the hole for the retaining clip. So you have to slide it in this way because see the little hole on the end of the pin? That's what the retaining clip slides into to lock it in place so the pins can't fall out. So go in there. There we go. There we go. Slit through one. Okay. He's got that one in place. Now he's got to get the other one in place. It's personal preference how you get this spring in. With both caliper pins in place, you can't get the spring in. You can hook it underneath the bottom and then you can push down and snap it in place just like that. Another way you can do it is you can slide the pin in at the same time you're aligning it with the spring and then the same with the other pin, you could do that. But as you saw, you could just snap it in place. Now what he's gonna wanna do is get a needle nose pliers and get these holes aligned better to where he can get the clip in. This one's gonna have to be rotated a little bit backwards. So he's rotating this one, there we go. Let's insert it and then put the clip in there to retain it and then now that's properly set up and it's ready to be installed on the rig. Now we're gonna reattach the brake caliper. If you got both calipers together and then you started wondering, oh, which one goes where, because they're not marked left or right, just know that the bleeder nipple goes to the top. So this is the correct one for the driver's side. All right, he's gonna slide this sucker in place. We've got the upper one started and now he's gonna get the lower one started. Now he's just gonna use a 3 8 ratchet, short extension, 17 millimeter socket and touch down the bolts. Okay, both 17 millimeter caliper bolts are touched down. Now he's gonna switch to a torque wrench and he's gonna torque both those bolts to 90 foot pounds. He's just going back and forth and slowly bringing them up to the spec. Okay, he's got the bottom one, he's gonna get the top one. Okay, they're both torqued to 90 foot pounds. Next, we're gonna attach the new brake line to the caliper. So here's the brake line. 
and it attaches to the caliper with a banjo bolt and two washers that go on either side. So you don't want to reuse these washers because you're most likely going to get a brake fluid leak there. So don't do it. He's got a new banjo bolt. That's personal preference. I don't really think you need to get a new banjo bolt for this, but he decided to do it anyways. And then you put it through with one washer underneath the head of the banjo bolt, and then you put a second washer. And then you install the line onto the caliper. So, See that black metal pin right there? That goes into that hole right there. So that's just an alignment pin that you have to capture. So it basically sets the line at the proper angle because if you didn't have that pin, then you would have an infinite amount of different angles you can get it in. So just like that. Now we're gonna torque the brake banjo bolt to 22 foot pounds. It's a 14 millimeter size. There it is, 22 foot pounds. We have the old line clamped off and now what we're gonna do is disconnect the flexible line from the hard line on the other side of that bracket with a 10 millimeter flare nut wrench. So if you look on the other side of the shock absorber, I'm facing forward, you can see the line I'm talking about. We're just gonna get on there with a 10 millimeter flare nut and break that free. Once we got the fitting broken free, we're gonna get either a flat blade screwdriver or a little pry bar and we're gonna knock this retaining clip out of its purchase and then spin out this nut really quick get the new line in place and get it started so we lose a minimal amount of brake fluid. So I'm gonna get onto this with my flex head flare nut wrench and I'm gonna break it free. Okay, that's broken free. Now I'm gonna get a flat blade screwdriver and a mallet. I'm working from the front and I'm gonna try to hit that clip out. I'm coming up against the shock absorber. Let me see if I could drive it out the rest of the way, right against the shock absorber. Oh, it's free. Okay, we got the clip out. Yep. Now we're gonna spin it out the rest of the way. Okay, it's disconnected. He's gonna put the new line in and I'm gonna see if I can get that started. We got the line hand tight and now he's gonna try to get the retaining clip installed. Got it. You didn't even have to hammer it in. But try to tap it with a plastic mallet a little bit. Yeah, it went in just a little bit more. Okay, now you could get onto there with a 10 millimeter flare nut and tighten that sucker up. How tight do you get it? Good and tight, good and tight. Is that good and tight? I like it. Okay, we've got the new brake line connected. So now we're gonna prepare to bleed the brakes. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna top off the master cylinder. From replacing the lines, we lost a little bit, so we're gonna top it off to the max, and then we're gonna start with the bleeding procedure. Technically, because we only disconnected lines in the front, we should only have to bleed the front brakes. You wanna start with the one furthest from the master cylinder. So that would be the passenger side. And then we would come back to this driver side and bleed this one. Bill wants to bleed the whole system. So in the factory service manual, it doesn't instruct you which one to start with, but a general rule of thumb is you start with the one furthest away from the master cylinder. So for this FJ80, you're gonna wanna start on the passenger rear, and then you're gonna to wanna to bleed the driver's side rear. And then this has a load sensing proportioning valve. You would wanna bleed that next because that's next in line going towards the master cylinder. And then you would go to the front and you would bleed the passenger side front. And then you would finish with the driver's side front. And during this process of bleeding, you always want to make sure you're going back to the master cylinder and topping it off because if you drain the master cylinder and you introduce air into there, then you're forced to bleed the master cylinder, causing yourself some more work. So have some brake fluid at the ready and constantly top it off while you're doing this.
For the purposes of this video, we're not going to go through the whole brake bleeding procedure because we have another video for that. So you could click on the link above and you could see our brake bleeding, brake flush video. And we go through the steps of how you bleed the brakes with the help of a helper. Hopefully you have a friend or a girlfriend or whoever else can help you with this by depressing the brake pedal while you go to each caliper and you bleed it. So there it is there. I am gonna show you one thing and this is the load sensing proportioning valve right here. It's on the driver's side. You can see the shock absorber and the lower control arm bar right here. And the bleeder is right there. So if you're not familiar with bleeding a load sensing proportioning valve, this is where it's at on your FG80 and that's the bleed nipple right there. And this again would be the third thing you bleed in the process. You would start with the passenger side rear, then the driver side rear, and then third would be this, and then you go forward and do the passenger front and then the driver front. We're done with the brake bleeding procedure. Now we're gonna get both of the front wheels back on and we're gonna torque the lug nuts to 85 foot-pounds. All right, the front wheels are torqued to spec. Now what you wanna do is take it for a test drive and make sure the rig is stopping properly. The brakes feel good. So before you get on the freeway and start going at freeway speeds, drive it through some slower residential streets, preferably ones that don't have a bunch of little kids and dogs and cats running around and do a few brake checks just to make sure everything is feeling good. Happy test driving, Bill. Sick mods. Sick mods is right. All right, we are all done with this job of rebuilding the front brake calipers on your FJ80. Rebuilding a four piston caliper is gonna be the same for any Toyota caliper that has the four pistons. They're very, very similar. Whether or not the rebuild kit is exactly the same, that I don't know. But I watched that guy Speedy's garage video on rebuilding some Tundra calipers and it's pretty much identical to the FJ80 calipers. So I think there's a lot of commonness to the calipers on these Toyota and Lexus vehicles. It's fairly straightforward. You saw us struggling for the best way to get those pistons out. We tried the air pressure thing and I ended up hammering my thumb on one of them ejecting out like a rocket. At the end of the day, I honestly think just grabbing a flat blade screwdriver and working each one out a little bit is perfectly fine. You just don't want to damage the sealing surface of each piston that makes a seal with that internal rubber seal. That's what you want to keep nice and perfect and machined and not gouge that. So as long as you're not prying on that, you're good to go. Time is going to tell whether or not this worked with fingers crossed, we hope it is, but what Bill's gonna have to do after driving it for a little bit, he's gonna have to get underneath the rig and just see, is there any brake fluid leaking out from the calipers or are they nice and dry and the job was a success? So time is gonna tell, but I'm pretty sure we did it right and everything's gonna be good to go. With all that said, we thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean and special guest Bill. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be notified when we put up new content on our channel. Peace out. Happy wrenching. Sick mods and sick brake caliper rebuilds on your Toyota or Lexus SUV or truck. Bye-bye. Sick mods.